Don't take me out, coach. I could still race. I've always thought the phrase Christmas in July was rather overused and a little gratuitous, but nah, not today. Today truly is Christmas in July. I mean, what is better than feasting upon a bunch of damaged Piston Cut racers? Not just any Piston Cut racers, next-gen Piston Cut racers from Cars 3, from the Florida 500 crash, and a little bit of my own creativity mixed in as well. But welcome back, guys, to another Disney Docket presentation. Today is the fourth year anniversary of my last Damage Piston Cut Racer video, and pretty much the only one that is the most viewed video on my channel with over four and a half million views. I'll leave a link to it in the description below and card suggestion pop up in the top right hand corner. But judging by that view count, most of you have already seen it, and I hope most of you are hungering for more. And so this video has been in the works for over six months. Sensei Luminous and I have partnered. He did all the customs here. He hand damaged them all and we'll get into more of the details behind the whole customization process later on in the video. But I just want to give a huge thank you to him. Check out his channel in the description below. I'll link it. He's a member of Collector's Link, our little YouTube group we got going on. And yeah, the talent behind these customs, he did a ton of research on the crash, like literally analyzing frame by frame to see who scratched who, who needs the scratches where, what kind of paint do we need to do, all that good stuff, stuff way beyond me. So he did a phenomenal job and I really want to highlight that, but we're not going to waste any time here, guys. We're going to review all 16 of these damaged racers. Now I've gotten obviously great support on that last video four years ago to the day, by the way, yeah, July 9th. But there was always one comment that kept on recurring and it's like, you forgot these racers, like you forgot these sponsors. I always thought it was funny because the person commenting that would forget sponsors themselves. Like they would probably like not include every sponsor that I didn't include. So I always thought that was funny, but it was never intended to include all of them and neither is this video. There will be a second part to this video later down the road. So these are the ones I thought fit best for this video part one here and so yeah guys we're going to lower ourselves down to the table get ourselves dirty and you know we might even cut ourselves because this metal is sharp wow that was incredibly cheesy but i love it i'm going to leave it on in there now before we get into the review of each of these guys i'm going to flash a couple pictures from the florida 500 crash at the end of cars 3 there that of course caused kyle mcqueen to rethink things have crews come into the race gave them a little break there to do so now like i said at the beginning of the video i added some creativity to this because I don't really have like a Florida 500 display. A lot of my stuff here, all my diorama stuff is based around the Motor Speedway of the South. Plus, you know, not all these racers may have been damaged during that Florida 500 Cars 3 crash. And I'm also missing some that might have been damaged in it. So I thought this is the best way, you know, just kind of make it my own. Maybe there was a future crash that occurred at the Motor Speedway of the South. You can see Lane McQueen speeding off into the distance there because we all know he doesn't get damaged, except for that one time, but he evades it all, you know, he gets through it. And so yeah, there are some cool little pictures, JD, somewhere in the mix. Now we're going to do, of course, some good comparisons here to their normal versions, as I did four years ago. You know, I'm the exact same person, I just sound a little different, I also look different, I probably have like a pound more of hair. I also probably weigh a couple more pounds, so anyways, Yes, <laughs> JD McPillar. We're going to use my classic trope of moving from least favorite to most favorite. Not saying that this is a bad customer or anything like that, but JD is just one of my least favorite Piston Cub next gens. So right off the bat, you could see that, well, he's using a Vietnam version of JD McPillar, which came in an 11 pack, exclusive to Target, I'm pretty sure. This is the Thailand version. They're pretty similar, but a little different color. I did review the Thailand version of JD probably about a year ago. And I'll have a bunch of links in the description and card suggestion, you know, for other cool videos you guys might be interested in. And yes, like I also said, we'll go through some more details you know, behind Sensei Luminous and how he made these step by step. But if you want to reach out to him, 
that contact info will be in the description below. He is willing to make you a custom. Now, a lot of you guys are always asking, you know, how do I get customs? How do I get that? And, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. This is your guy. From now on, he is your guy. So, yeah, you can see the toe cap logo there is pretty much the same. But over here, JD did take a hit. This is where JD got smacked around a little bit on his right side. So, I just absolutely love how exact all the damage is. Like, it's not like Sensei just went bam, 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 you know, and just like, aimlessly scratched up the cars with a mouth or whatever. No, everything was deliberate. Everything was justified. Everything was calculated using very, very sophisticated econometrical regression analysis. Anyways, you can see here, major scratch right there with some you know lines going up and downward, some ancillary scratches. So it looks like he took a brunt force right there and just kind of, you know, the rest of it also took a little bit of a beating. You could see a little bit down here, some of the blackness as well, some of the black markings, which really all the Piston Cop racers should have because racing on that tarmac, the asphalt, you know, you get those black marks. He also looks like he got hit back here in his corner and left quite the mark, completely almost wiping out and distorting that toe cap logo. Maybe this guy just wasn't a fan of toe cap, you know, because we all know, well, maybe. Toe cap, one of the shadier Piston Cup sponsors. So maybe this was a protest. <laughs> toe cap is not appropriate. Anyways, definitely one of the better Piston Cup racers that we will see today. He is one of the luckier ones. On this side, he didn't take much damage at all. You know, a little bit around the fenders there, a little bit around this one as well. He cut this black circle here, probably by some sort of blast, some sort of contusion from another racer that left a paint imprint in that kind of circular design right there. You can see also right along that ridge, he took some damage, you know, right when the paint is at its weakest point. So again, I love the exactness of it all. His rims are damaged up as well. The wheels are a little messed up. You can't fully see the light your text anymore. Just overall amazing, lots of scratches. But you know, if you think this is a lot of scratches, Disney docket, just wait until you see the next guy. Or as JD would say, you know, you should see the other guy. Cause JD looks beat up, but man, he beat up someone else too. <laughs> so there you go, JD McPillar, the toe cap next gen we're gonna put him right back where he was next up is the clutch a next gen noah gocek so both of these will be thailand this is my version and he was only released from thailand so i guess shouldn't really pat myself on the back there <laughs> pretty hard to screw that one up disney docket now he didn't change the expression too much with jd there but as we move on you'll see a lot more of Stuff like this, where he changes the expression in a slight way, but it's powerful, you know? He doesn't do a whole lot, but his one little stroke of paint right there on the eye changes the entire look of him, makes him look great, makes him look beat up. You know, he's squinting a little bit, that eye took a hit. You know, he's a little bit, I wouldn't say it's a full-on black eye, but, you know, something's going on over there. He definitely needs to squint up a little bit. So I absolutely love it. This expression looks perfect. He was able to match the color very well, which is something that is, you know, more difficult than you think. Matching like these greens or, you know, whatever color we come across here because being off just by like a couple shades, you know, on the spectrum, like that makes a difference aesthetically, visually. You could notice that. But Sensei Luminous did a phenomenal job keeping everything within rhythm. Now, Noah Gocek took a hit up here on his left corner, a nice little smack, but nothing too bad. He can live with that. He can keep racing with that. Oh, my. Just an absolute defecation of the Clutch A branding over here, the C plus A. It took me forever to realize that that's a C. That's like the plus for the Band-Aid, the hospital aid symbol, and then there's your A. It took me a while to figure that one out, but I'm there. I'm there. So yeah, something scrapped up against them along the side here, leaving some nasty marks. The back wheel is actually messed up. You can see that the axle's not perfectly straight anymore, and a lot of that light year text is actually worn off. You can see that 
can really move around up there. Like, look, it got stuck up there. Now it's like that. Yeah, lots of movement to be had there. And the tire also took a beating itself. And Noah lost a bit of a spoiler. Someone bit it off. Actually, no, it just tore off during the collision, which is pretty cool. Something difficult to do, you know, to just acutely cut off a little bit of spoiler, you know. Rumor has it Sensei Luminous actually nodded it for 30 days straight to weaken the plastic until it finally came off. So props to him for that. Noah was pretty fortunate though. He didn't get much on the back here, if anything. And just a little bit on the side, another little black swoosh, a little paint mark from someone else most likely. And there you have a little bit of a scratch around the exhaust pipes. So yeah, again, one thing that you know many people don't really notice, you know, you just kind of go for the scratches and the dents, but often the other racers that hit you are going to scrape off their paint on you. Like it will leave an imprint of their paint. You can see it a lot during the first Cars movie. And so it's something that customizers who make damage racers should be doing and should be considering. Come on, please, please don't do this to me. Wow, we just don't want to cooperate today, do we? All right. <laughs> okay, then. Anyways, moving on to Sheldon Shifter here, who was nicely perched up upon Will Rush like a good boy. He was not sliding down. This is really bothering me, so we're going to have to go like that. All right, that works. A little notch on the spoiler there. Sheldon Shifter, where are you, my friend? Here you are. So, yeah, I think both of these are, yep, Chinese versions, even though Sheldon was released from Thailand as well. He might have even gotten the Vietnam version, but he has not been released in a little bit. So a nice expression change here as well, just a full-on squint instead of the half squint that Noah had there. Just, you know, his eyes are tearing up a little bit. Oh, it's painful. It's painful. I'm sure it is. But again, these three, they're still rolling. They still have all four wheels somewhat intact. It could be much worse for them. Sure, the branding on their side, scraped off, disintegrated. Sputter stop 92, gone, reduced to ashes. But he could still drive. You know, I wonder... You're getting paid, you're getting sponsored by, you know, Lightyear. Well, I don't know, the contingency sponsors, Spother Stop, you know, they are the ones sponsoring you, putting you in the race. So when the branding gets rubbed off, you know, Lightyear's gone and everything, like, does your paycheck just reflect that? Like, you know, you're on your hourly rate, it just clicks off, like you're just clocked out of work because the branding's off? I wonder. No, nah, I'm just kidding. We all know that's not true. These guys certainly are not on hourly wages. Yeah, pulling minimum wage. <laughs> Millions of dollars going around in the Piston Cup, I'm sure. Car bucks, right? Or no, that's Starbucks. So what's car currency? Hmm. So yeah, there you can see quite a bit of damage. A little bit here on the back, but again, nothing too severe. Another little black marking there. A little bit of scraping along that ridge. A little bit back there. I'm happy for these three guys. They made it out minimal damage compared to everyone else. We should applaud them for being evasive like Lightning McQueen. Now, I'm sure they didn't pull any stunt like McQueen did by bouncing off someone else's tires through a cloud of smoke. But everyone can strive, right? All right, so there you have Sheldon Shifter for a sputter stop. Next up is none other than Will Rush, one of the more recent additions to the Next Gen family, released in early 2021, actually like December of 2020. And yeah, he's actually one of the, well, for me, he's one of my favorite Piston Cut racers. He is pretty coveted as well. And this is actually one of my favorites that Sensei Luminous has done here. Love the expression change. I think it's one of the better ones here. He did probably the most to it out of many of these that you'll see here. You know, you add a little bit down there, down there, up there. But it really works out here. The color matches perfectly, which I'm really surprised that he was able to find such an exact like metallic lavender. But it looks awesome. Makes him look sad. Like some of these other guys just look like ticked off 
and agitated, like, come on, man, I'm injured now, these other guys here, as we go on further, look a little sadder. They look a little more depressed, a little bit more emotion, like Will here. Now, Will looks like he got absolutely trampled. He got ran over because he got some, like, what looks to be tire marks here across the hood. And he also looks like maybe someone drove up on him and then came off down the front because that front part of his hood there and the bumper sort of as well, that grill area just completely scratched up down to the bone, just completely down to the metal there. So, yeah, he took a lot of beating here in the front. But his side, perfect pristine back pristine and the side yeah I got a little scratchy scratchy there but you know we all can kind of infer what happened here it looks like somebody went <laughs> like that you know just hits him there jumps up on his hood comes off the hood there see again like I said everything was calculated everything was very deliberate it all makes sense the damage that Sensei Luminous implemented here. So yeah, I love Will Rush's expression here. And you know, you could definitely tell the course of the damage. He looks great. All right, who should we go to next? Let's go with Jonas Carver's another relatively unscathed. You know, we say unscathed very lightly around here just because some of these guys, huh, they're, they're down pretty bad. But Jonas Carver's, he's looking pretty good. Alrighty here. So again, a little bit of a black eye. You could probably consider this one to be more of a black eye just because his eyelids are indeed black. But Sensei Luminous added that little eye shadow down below there. Now on his hood here, everything's fine. You know, nothing happened here in the front at all. But toward the back here and the side, quite a bit, quite a bit of damage and some of that green paint. So it looks like, I don't know, that kind of looks like Chase Racelet's color, maybe in the fast fog, hit up against him and left some of their green paint on him. Again, I love the feel here. It's even like textured, like you could feel, you know, just the roughness there. So again, love how Sensei Luminous did that. Like I would not be able to make these customs look so good. Everyone thinks like, oh, I could do a damage racer easily, you know, just scratch them up a little bit, you know, dent them a little bit. No, if you want to make a good one, you got to be careful with it. You got to make things look believable because one missed stroke and you're overboard and it looks dramatic and ridiculous and exaggerated. And, you know, just a couple of scratches here and there. It looks like you played with it, you know, when you were five years old, you know, again, you don't want that either. There's a nice, happy medium. And that is exactly what this is here. Now, this back wheel. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely destroyed doesn't even run too well you can see that all the light your text has been just rubbed off entirely looks like someone really came up on the side here of jonas a little bit of a spoiler splintering off here and it's loose in its socket he even got a little side swipe action over on the right here as well just absolutely eating away at the number there love that look there love how it looks really happy with that Cool, cool, cool. So that's Jonas Carver's for you. Now, my question is, where am I going to put these, right? Oh, my God. I'm running out of room. Something fierce. Run out of room badly, guys. No one wants to stay on top of each other right now. There we go. All right. Got them. All right. Let's move on to Tim Treadless here. Now, Sensei Luminous used a factory custom for Tim. That's why he looks a little different. I actually have... You know, the exact same factory custom that he used. So we'll use that to compare because using this like metallic Chinese version, the rare variant, it doesn't really do much for us. You know, it's not a great comparison. So, yeah, we're going to use this. Oh, all right, whatever, man. Whatever. Guess you guys can get out of character. <laughs> the scene is frozen right now. So Tim here took quite a bit of damage up front. You got some yellow paint rubbing off on him. So maybe a little George Newen action. Some blue paint over here. A little cam spinner perhaps hit both of them. Now this guy looks daisy to me. Like he looks nauseous, fatigued, confused, and also just emotionless at this point. He's like everything he's worked for over the last five years of his life 
preparing for the Piston Cup gone because of a stupid crash. But yeah, no, nice change of expression right there. The eyes already do look kind of weird on this Tim Treadless anyways. He's got this weird matte finish, which is why I you know, got this FC Factory Custom in the first place because, what is that? I like the matte finish and then the stark contrast with this glossy brown here. I thought it looked really good. Now moving on to the side here again, side swipe action. Contingency con <laughs> sponsor is just gone. Piston Cup, Combustor, Carbon Cyberian Synergy terminating their contracts with Tim Treadless because of that, I'm sure. On the back there, luckily Tim was able to avoid anything. And a little bit right there around the exhaust pipes, but not too bad. Tim's okay. He just looks really upset for sure. <laughs> Okie dokie. Moving right along. Let's go toward the back there with Richie Gunzit. Now, Richie seems to be our first one that is like completely undrivable. Richie needs to be towed. He needs to <laughs> scatter shields who is currently occupied with Steve Slick the page right now. He needs help because this front left tire ain't going nowhere. As you can see, I can't do anything to get this thing to roll. It is wedged up into his wheel well. Somebody gave it a big boy smack. And yeah, he's just struggling. He's struggling to get anywhere right now. He's going to have to pull Light McQueen and start jumping. Nice change of expression here. He's almost about falling asleep like that left eye. His left eye is nearly shut. So it looks really good. Both of these are Thailand if you were curious. But yeah, you could tell here most of the damage is focused on this left side. Probably just got smacked like poof, tire just immediately dislodges is off the axle. Gets scratched around this bumper here and the side there. A little bit back in this right corner or this left corner rather as well. Bum, bum, bum. A little bit on that corner as well. It's those pills. <laughs> Whoever smashed into him and himself, they're going to need some Gasprin. Obviously based off of aspirin in real life. Wonder if he carries any on him, you know, while he's on the race track. I think that probably would be illegal, but, you know, get smacked in a crash. Just pop a Gasprin real quick and you're chilling. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, not for you, Richie. Tire, you're going to need a little bit of a pit crew. Speaking of that, when is Mattel going to release any Piston Cup pit crews? Or are they just not? Jackson Storm's pity, just like a one and done. Create the model for it, call it a day. I'm really concerned about it. Like, I really am not confident they will do anything because we're, you know, already hanging the cars on the road and they're going to put all their focus on that. Like, let's think about it. After Cars 1 came out, they released a lot of pit crew stuff until Cars 2 came out, and they didn't release any new pit crew stuff for years and years and years. Like, I know we got some in 2018, like Brin Imager, Mike Stockcar, Megan Shifter, but that was eight years. Oh, man, I don't want to think about it. Holy crap. All right, anyways, Aaron Clock, you're here. Two Thailand versions. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. A nice change of expression there. Now, obviously, you can't change the mouth. You could, I guess, by like drawing a new face on it. But I told him I wanted these to be amazingly realistic. So I don't want to necessarily go too overboard, too dramatic. And the models already look fine. Like they're all frowning. Like a smiling next gen. What is that? That doesn't exist. That's Cruz Ramirez on a good day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the stock car project. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but that's going to be more difficult because they're all smiling. Mattel just being so discriminatory, like, are next gens all really that frowny? Like, are they all that frumpy, man? But yeah, Aaron Clocker looks pretty good right here. Did get a little smackage here on his left side, a little bit of that black imprinting there, some scraping along the ridge. I love that he does it along that ridge because that realistically is where the paint's going to, you know, Crack off first because it's on that stress point. He lost a bit of his spoiler right here, just like that tip, which makes sense because of how far it protrudes. It's definitely a little weak, and he took some damage in the back 
Haven't seen too much rear damage so far, so this is quite nice. Those rookie racing stripes completely almost burned off there. And lots of scratches. And one gash right there. Also lost some of the light year up here. Cool. I love that word, gash. I think it would be a homophone, right? Yeah, it definitely is, because when you... It kind of sounds like a gash. Love my sound effects. All right, who do we go to next? Let's go to Harvey Rodcap here. Now, this is a Thailand version of Harvey, but I don't have a Thailand version loose. So this Chinese version here is going to have to suffice, even though they look pretty different. Like, this is like a metallic gray. This is more of a just flat gray. Now, this is another one of my favorite expression changes. And Sensei was able to do something a little bit more unique with it, just based on his normal expression, not as crazy <laughs> and aggressive as some of the other next gens, like, I don't know, Aaron Clocker, I mean, he is, that's a growl. But Harvey here just kind of looks, you know, he looks a little sad, like a little frowny, but nothing too belligerent. And so he was able to make a very frowny, this is a sad Harvey right here. This is the womp 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 face. Now, Harvey took some hits up here in the front, messed up his tire a little bit, but not quite as bad as that one on Richie Gunzit. A little damage here over on the back, a little bit around the fender. His back's looking pretty good, though. A little bit around this fender as well, exhaust pipes. Typical damage areas, you know, around the fenders, that ridge, exhaust pipes. But Harvey's actually not as bad as I thought he was. You just kind of get, you know, probably just a quick little hit there. And he's pretty upset about it, though. Oh, I feel for you, man. You know, I watch, like, some professional sports, like baseball. You know, Bryce Harper gets hit in the thumb, <laughs> and he's out. He's out for probably a couple months because he got hit in the thumb by some random pitcher. I don't think it was actually a random picture. Who was it? If you guys don't know, Bryce Harper is like one of the best baseball players currently. And the pitcher threw in his thumb and I think it broke it. I'm sure it did. And so he's out. He's not able to play for a good long while. The pitcher, oh, it was Blake Snell. Yeah, so yeah, they're friends. So it was okay. I mean, yeah, it's stuff like that happens. You know, that's just the risk you take. When you play professional sports or, you know, when you partake in motorsports, you're like that, you know, even, you know, in F1 and NASCAR, like the risk is there for them. Fortunately, if their car gets wrecked, hopefully they're okay. That's a win, you know, <laughs> it's not like they're paying for their car. It's their team. Now, here we think I have my favorite, I don't know, him and Cam Spinner are fighting for my favorite damage racer in this batch here. I absolutely love how accurate it looks to the movie. Like we have a very good look of George Newen from the movie. You guys saw it earlier when I flashed those pictures. He looks exactly like this. Exactly. The expression's perfect. So super happy about that. Probably the most altered expression that Sensei did, just you know, to try and get that accuracy. So really cool. His wheels. Kind of screwed up, you know, like Richie's was, but not quite as bad, you know, because he got hit right here. Now, fortunately for him, he didn't have any contingency sponsors to worry about. I think that was, you know, a Pixar glitch, actually. Pixar didn't animate any in for him, which we all know they should have. So I don't think we can blame Mattel for that one. Spoilers a little bent upwards, but... You know, everything else is okay. You know, you got some scratchage back here. Yeah, whoa. Man, that was just rubbed raw. Whoa. Both of his sides, looks like he was put in like some sort of vice and just squeezed or grated down to the bone. Oh, man, he looks like it too. He looks like he's in pain. Wow. So, yeah, there is George Newen for you. And yes, a Chinese George Nguyen, a very rare next gen. At least right now, as we speak, he is being re-released from Thailand, but this Chinese version, yeah, 
It's a rare one, and we sacrificed it to the custom gods, aka Sensei Luminous, along with all these. Like you guys see, lots of Thailand variants. They aren't super rare. Like some of these, you know, are pretty cheap to get. Like Jonas Carver's, Sheldon Shifter, Noah Gocek, but others, you know, look at Will Rush, Harvey Rodcap, Steve Slick LePage. Who we'll get to. Those are some extremely difficult ones to obtain, and they were sacrificed. Next up is Chase Racelet, a Thailand variation that I do not also have loose, so this Chinese version will suffice. Now, I really do like this expression change as well. I know I've said that a lot, but this one strikes me as just one of the more realistic ones. Another eye squint. Now, this is the first one we've encountered that has some bent metal. So I'd say was able to bend this one out a little bit, which looks really good. Looks very natural and nothing too extreme. Chase here also lost probably about a third of his spoiler, so that sucks. <laughs> Vital eye. Yeah, Chase got it rough here. He got it in the back, <laughs> along the side, got the metal pushed out. Tax rubbed off the tires there, even though they're all in pretty decent shape still. That metallic emerald hood paint there. Imperfect now. Blemished. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones as well. I mean, of course, he has to be. Chase Racelet's one of the more prominent next gens in the film same thing with ryan inside laney this is a thailand variant so here is the thailand variant which i recently opened in my team blinker video at least i think yeah i definitely did this is a pretty elite expression alteration if i may say so myself the full-on half eye closure the eye patch as i like to call it yeah, Ryan inside Laney, he definitely has a black eye. He got smacked over there on the left side, probably coming in like this. And he can't open it anymore. It is swollen up and it is closed. This wheel, all the light your text is rubbed off, which actually makes it look pretty cool. It's a nice looking tire there. But it is kind of pushed up into the wheel well, so it doesn't run super well. Looks like he was shaving. Like That's the first impression I get. I know, right? It's kind of weird. But it looks like he's got a bunch of shaving cream on. He's about to go to town on his beard. But no, it's just a bunch of scratches around his mouth. A little bit there on the side, of course. A little bit around the fender back here. Oh, my. That's how I actually damaged my cars inadvertently. And he was able to avoid anything like on the roof and the back, though. Sensei was pretty fair, you know. If you get it in the front, you don't get it in the back. If you get it through the side, you don't get it through the front, you know. I don't know. And obviously still adhering to what happened in the movie, which I appreciate. I appreciate that accuracy, which he did a great job on George Newman. Now, George, yeah, he got kind of everywhere. <laughs> there were a few where I was like, wow, yeah. <laughs> Sensei was not kind to you. Rich Mixon. Yes, another rare next gen that was sacrificed. Both of these are Chinese versions. So most of these guys, they you know, end up looking sad after you know the crash. You know, you have Will Rush there looking like a puppy dog. And then you have some like Rich here who look even more agitated. Frustrated, like this is the Bryce Harper after he got you know hit in the thumb. Like he's swearing, like he's yelling, like this is Rich Mixon. Like Rich didn't do anything wrong. He just ended up getting involved in the crash. He had nowhere to drive to, and now he's upset about it. So you can see he got scratched up here on his left side. Nice. All things considered, I do think Rich was a little whiny because. He definitely didn't get it that bad. In the back here, this wheel is, yeah, all the light your text is worn off and it's a little chewed up, a little chiseled away at. Lots of contact here in this back right quadrant. 
Yeah, it looks really good though. Again, really realistic. So there you have it. Still to this day, I don't know why they named him that. <laughs> named him after one of our more questionable presidents of the United States, but we're not getting into politics. Probably shouldn't have said that. Who do we go to next? Steve Slick LePage. All right, you got to come over here on Stu Scatter Shields. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stu. I'm going to need a lot more Stu's for all these canceled. Canceled? Damage racers. Now, here is yet another very rare next gen that we sacrificed. Like, oh my God. Yeah, Steve. I actually got a really good deal for this off Mercari along with Harvey. So instead of paying like what they were probably worth, I got super lucky with them. Like, ugh, unbelievably lucky. So I'm very grateful. This is the Vietnam version of him that came in an 11 pack, which actually used to be really common. And then here's my Chinese version from that next gen four pack. They're very similar, so I'm not too afraid to compare these two, except the Vietnam version does have those window bars in the back. Now, I do like this expression change. He looks like he's trying to word something. He's trying to say something, but he's just kind of spin out gibberish because of how damaged he is up front. Scratchosaurus Rex right here. This front bumper has also gotten a little bite taken off. It is sharp. Like when I said sharp metal earlier, that is some sharp metal. The back portion of him looks like it's been pushed up a little bit. You can kind of see there's more of a gap there. Oh no, yeah. You got some gnarliness going on back here. The foil design they used on Steve like was kind of, you could see it crinkles up like even on just like your normal version. So the Vietnam version looks like was done a little bit better than the Chinese version, but <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fragile. So Steve starts getting damaged and the whole paint scheme just kind of falls apart. But yeah, the tires are messed up on this one, which makes him look like he's kind of smushing into the ground. So I'm a big fan of him. Definitely one of my favorites of the lot. All right, who should we go to next? Let's go to JP Drive here. Now, obviously, this is a custom. Mattel's not released JP Drive. This is a custom as well. I actually sacrificed my first Jim Scavenger JP Drive custom. I thought it had to go because it wasn't accurate to the film. He made this like way, way back in 2017 when we didn't fully know what JP looked like. And so I thought, eh, send it over to Sensei Luminous. <laughs> He'll give him a good beating. And sure enough, he did. This is the Wacko Arts Custom I reviewed a few years ago on the channel. And here's another custom that I'll be reviewing very soon. It's a very nice one, probably the best I have. And it's kind of like a Thailand variant custom. But for now, we'll use these to compare. Since I even made this custom a little bit more accurate by filling in the silver in that Apple logo there and by painting the rim silver as well. So I was grateful for that. JP took a hit up here in the front. But yeah, there was a lot of careful decisions that went into this whole video. Like, what do we do for JP? Like, do we use a Tommy conversion? Do we get a custom made specifically to be damaged? So, you know, what I ended up doing, I thought this was a wise decision. I still do is, you know, just sacrificing this custom, which did not age well because you know it turned out to be inaccurate in many ways here as you could see and by that other one i just showed you to kind of replace it even though i did still have this wacko arts one that's really good yeah jp didn't take too many hits anyway so he's chilling still definitely still could slide this one in the collection <laughs> and last but not least at least hopefully i didn't forget anyone is Cam Spinner, one of the most, I don't know how to say that, like one of the fan favorite next gens, one of the most like next gens. Cam Spinner's in the Cars 3 video game along with Rich Mixon, so they're very popular. And also his sponsor was originally in Inside Out, so there's a lot of fanfare and a lot of reason to be. 
But so Sensei Luminous was able to correct his eyelid color here. I don't know why Mattel already released him. Like they always release him with black eyelids. They should be blue. And so Sensei corrected that, gave him a nice expression, which looks pretty accurate. Now, not, he's not screaming like he did kind of in the movie, but still accurate to how he looks in that scene because he was kind of the instigator of the crash. <laughs> Poor Cam, I did save you for last because... I don't know. I wanted to just extend your, your pain. I know you were super nervous to go. Because you kind of caused this whole thing. At least, you know, in the Florida 500 version. Now, I love how he was able to, like, crink this metal here in the center. Like, it's not, like, pulled apart or anything. But he just was able to put, like, a little gash <laughs> in that fender right there, which looks great. Move up the bumper off the base there. It looks really nice. This tire's messed up. Damage along the side here. Both of these are Thailand variants, by the way. The rims colors completely gone. No more gray. All black. And the spoiler is loose. You can see it's only held in by that one peg there. And it took a slashing right there. So this other part could easily fall off at any given point. His back is okay, though. Oh no, this back wheel, it's a godder. Yeah, it's completely bent. The metal all around it is torn up. Yeah, he moved a lot of metal on this one, which I'm happy about. Yeah, this one's Steve LePage. And who was the other one that got some metal moved? Oh yeah, Chase Racer. They definitely were the main movers when it comes to the metal. Twisting it and distorting it and everything. A little hood damage there, right where it would shut. It looks really good. So yeah, there you guys have it. Those are all 16 of the damage racers. I am so happy to have done this video. Like I said, it's been in the works for forever. And this video also seems to have taken forever. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did want to share a few pictures of the process that this, you know, journey embarked on. Lots of, you know process pictures progress pictures i should say that sensei was able to show me to keep me you know going along with it i was able to i was hungry man like i said at the beginning of the video i hope you guys were hungry i was hungry so he was able to keep me satiated with some pictures there and before we end off i do want to toss a few other damaged icons in the mix here of course we have damaged doc damaged king who i just reviewed kind of as a preface to this video a little bit foreshadowing we got what are you doing here, bro? Get the heck out of here. You don't belong here. We have Cars 3, Lightning McQueen there. Yeah, let's pull up some of my favorites. Of course, George and Cam probably are going to be my favorites, along with Steve. Will is pretty awesome. So is Chase. Harvey, like his expression. So you guys let me know in the comment section below who is your favorite I know there's going to be a lot of JP Dry fans out there because he is Apple. A lot of Tank Coat fans, Rich Mixon, Ryan Inside. Actually, we're going to call him Ryan Eyepatch Laney now. He looks pretty sweet. And yeah, these guys are cool too, but definitely some of my least favorites back there. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And check out my video four years ago. I know I sounded a little different, but... I was 18, what was I, 17, 18 at the time, so yeah, not too young or anything. Still probably a little immature at that time. I mean, heck, I'm still pretty immature. And I couldn't do this video without showing the classic damage pairing, Todd Marcus and Claude Scruggs, who Mattel has yet to capitalize on releasing those two. The iconic head-to-head -head right there. But yeah, guys, again, want to express my deepest gratitude for the support you guys have given me, not only on like these types of videos, but just everything. You know, it's one of those special videos. This kind of is like the video of the year almost, or at least I hope it turns out to be pretty successful. And yeah, guys, big shout out to Sensei Luminous yet again. Lots of careful thought going into each and every one of these customs. You know, where do we get one to use? Should we even do this one for phase one? Is it worth sacrificing like a George Newin? What are we going to do for flipped over? Oh, they're re-releasing him. Yay, yay, yay. I'll see you guys later. Bye now.